the oldest civil war between two political factions in the South America country of Colombia during the years 1899 to 1902. The war started due to economic and political reasons. There were tensions between liberals and conservatives. The war extended into Ecuadorian and Venezuelan territories. War started between federalism a governmental system with one main ruling government as well as smaller regional governments and centralism, a political system that has one ruling government over all regions of the country. These systems were backed by liberal and conservative parties respectively. The conservatives favored a strong central government and strong links between church and state. The liberals, on the other hand, favored stronger regional governments, and a division between church and state. The two factions had been at odds since the dissolution of Gran Colombia in 1831. The Liberal Party was being led by Rafael Uribe Uribe and Benjamin Herrera, while the Conservative Party was being led by Pedro Nel Ospina and Jose Manuel Merikin. In 1898, a presidential election was issued electing the Conservative President Manuel Antonio San Clemente. This election and many before it had been rigged in the Conservatives' favor which agitated the Liberals. San Clemente, who was well into his 80s, had participated in a conservative overthrow of the government in 1861 and was extremely unpopular among liberals. Because of health problems, San Clement's grip on power was not very firm. At this time, the country was undergoing severe financial crisis. He called for replacing the old currency which to a certain extent helped to resolve the financial struggle. But coffee exporting started suffering a loss. Most of the Liberals' backers were coffee plantation owners. The Liberal Revolt began in Santander province. The first clash took place when Liberal forces tried to take Bucaramanga in November 1899. The victory at Polonso gave the Liberals the hope and strength to drag out the conflict for two more years against superior numbers. They clashed in May 1900 at Palo Negro, in Santander department. The battle was brutal. It lasted approximately two weeks, which meant that by the end decomposing bodies became a factor on both sides. The two armies fought time and again over the same stretch of trenches. There were close to 2,500 dead in those 15 days and the Liberal Army had broken. After the battle, the war escalated, and became one of the most brutal conflicts in early 20th century South America. The Liberals had been getting aid from neighboring Venezuela. The devastating loss at Palo Negro made the government of Venezuela to halt all support for a time. But a visit from Liberal General Rafael Uribe Uribe convinced to resume sending aid. After the butchery at Polonso and Palo Negro, the people of Colombia had lost any desire to continue the fighting. The Treaty of Nirlandia, signed on October 24, 1902, was basically a ceasefire agreement that included the disarming of all liberal forces. On November 21, 1902, the Treaty of Wisconsin was signed and officiated on the U.S. battleship called Wisconsin to formally end the war. This treaty aimed amnesty, free elections, and political and monetary reform. The Thousand Days War resulted in loss of thousands of lives and the country was ravaged. Panama was seceded and Colombia lost this valuable territory forever.